Hey there, I'm Janie. And I'm Cody. The data center is changing at the speed of light. Trends are now measured in months, not years, and data is scaling in leaps and bounds. And falling behind is no longer just an inconvenience. It's a showstopper, and Pure gets it. That's why we created Outside the Box, a show for techies by techies. And here's what you can expect. Innovative tools, tech, and trends that will make your data center run smarter. Coming up, a world champion defies the odds using hardcore analytics. We open the kimono on the Pure Storage Innovation Labs, and Cody and team demo cool tricks with cloud tech. First, let's take a spin with the people of Pure on a ride we're calling Smart Storage. In the beginning, Pure led the flash revolution. Now, flash is the new normal, but we never stopped innovating. So what's next? Smart Storage, it's built on three promises. It's effortless. It's efficient. And it's evergreen. Effortless is a lot better than just easy. No more babysitting your storage or forklift upgrades. Your storage is always on, always fast, and always secure. Efficient means a 10x smaller footprint. Data services with zero compromise. And storage that's fully automatable for cloud and self-service IT. With Evergreen, buy your storage once and upgrade as needed, forever. All without any disruption or performance loss. In the beginning, Pure led the flash storage revolution. Now Pure is leading the smart storage revolution. This is the new normal. In the end, when the storage itself is smart, you don't need to waste time and resources managing it. That's the really cool part about smart storage, because the smarts just got built into the storage from the beginning. And that frees you up to innovate outside of the box, like building a private cloud. In this episode, we're going to look at what it takes to build the world's most efficient private cloud. And we're helping customers engineer clouds with massive scalability, always on service assurance, self-service automation, and of course, flash array availability. And up first, we'll hear from Chad and Sandeep in a segment we like to call Shiny New Things. Hi, my name is Chad Kenny. We're here in our hardware labs where you can hear all of the shiny new things we've been developing. I'm here with Sandeep. Sandeep, how you doing? Hey Chad, I'm doing great. And yep, we're here in the heart of where the magic happens. This is where the original Flash Array and the Flash Array M were born. And today we're super excited to talk to you about the petabyte scale Flash Array M. Indeed, it comes with 512 terabytes raw. That translates to about a petabyte and a half of effective capacity with typical data reduction rates. It also has an amazing density delivering petabyte and a half in just seven U form factor. Just over five years ago, it used to take six racks of just the flash array to deliver a petabyte. And now we're talking about you know, the petabyte and a half in seven U. Some serious density. Customers also love the fact they can go from 15 terabytes in our M10 all the way up to the M70, getting 1.5 petabytes of addressable capacity, all non-disruptively without performance impact, but just controller swaps and adding more and more capacity. Yeah, indeed, it's great for customers to just be able to scale completely non-disruptively. And each one of these new Ms comes with 80 Broadwell cores per system, 3.6 terabyte flash modules, and also the 7.6 terabyte flash modules. It also has two terabyte of DRAM for our scalable metadata. We're also introducing new M20s and new M50s. Across the M lineup, what it means for customers is they get anywhere from 20 to 30% performance boost. All of these are available uh, for ordering today. And with the new Purity Operating System 4.8, we've increased the amount of objects on the system, giving you 10 times the volumes, snapshots, as well as being able to address about 50% more capacity for each of the existing platforms. It just continues the overall evergreen storage model, which everybody absolutely loves. So Sandeep, let's talk a little bit about this product well, over here. Sorry, buddy. We can't talk about some super secret stuff today, but stay tuned for future episodes where you'll learn more. Maybe next time. You know when you're in a rental car and you pull up to the gas station and you're like, all right, is my gas tank on the left or the right? You have no idea and then you get out of the car and you realize I'm on the wrong side, you gotta get back in, drive around, it's a nightmare. Well, you know, if you look at the dashboard, there's a little icon there with a gas pump tank and it has a little arrow. It tells you if it's on the left or the right. That's the side you need to pull into. It will change your life. Not only do I have bar trivia knowledge, but I also have some data center knowledge I can share with you. An important thing to understand about your environment is unmap and space reclamation. Are you using a hypervisor? Are you using an operating system that supports unmap? 
How does it use on map? Does it run it automatically? Is it something you manually have to run? Understand how it works and come up with some kind of best practice around running it or making sure that it runs. This makes sure that the space efficiency, the capacity usage on your array, whether it's a flash array or otherwise, is as efficient as possible. It will help you out and it'll save you money. Hi, we're here at the Hardware Lab where we build shiny new things. I'm here with my friend Lou, the performance professor. Thanks for having me here, Chad. Thanks for being here. So today we're going to talk a little bit about quality of service. Quality of service has been in the storage industry for decades, but mm -hmm. unfortunately there are tons of stories about it not being deployed successfully, really overall complex. As customers consolidate tens if not hundreds of applications onto the flash array, they get more and more concerned about potential noisy neighbors that could impact performance. And until today, they really needed a PhD in order to be able to configure these types of solutions. I mean, it is a knob o -rama in order to be able to actually do it. And the application's performance changes, you need to change the overall knobs. I'd say it did more harm than good in many cases. At Pure Storage, we have a maniacal focus on consistency of performance. Whether it's a firmware upgrade, controller upgrade, or capacity upgrade, we want to make sure that performance stays consistent throughout. And so today we're taking things to an entirely new level with our no-touch quality of service. Lou's going to give us a quick demo to show us how truly awesome this is. Thanks, Chad. I'm going to dive right in here. So here we have a set of workloads that are running on a flash array. It's right at the performance capacity, and notice all of the latencies are well within acceptable ranges. Mm -hmm. But now what we're going to do is we're going to add a workload that's going to push it over the top. Okay. Normally what would happen, as you know, is that all the workloads would be affected because um, that's the classic problem of noisy neighbor. But here what you can see with always on QoS enabled is that only the noisy neighbors are being throttled. Wow. The rest are completely left alone. That's great. Totally effortless, totally autonomous. You can burst to the max and everything behaves normally. But if you go over the max, then QoS kicks in and it does the right thing and throttles the noisy neighbors. And this is just the beginning. This is the foundation for other QoS features that we'll have coming in the future. Wow, I think customers are going to absolutely love this. But where are the knobs? We're going to switch gears now to a segment Cody likes to call Automate all the things. All right, what are we automating today? Well, a couple different things. Uh, first, we're automating the flash array itself, creating volumes, creating snapshots, but also the functionality behind that. I want to make a copy of my production SQL server and present it to my development SQL server so I can run my own tests. Okay. So let's take a look at a video that I created earlier. Now, who wrote the code for this? So the vRail is orchestrator plugin was a lot of the code that I've written myself. So what we're doing right now inside the SQL Server, and this is a VM inside my vRealize automation environment, is I'm creating a new database. Mm -hmm. And so let's say this database has lots of new data inside of it. And what we want to do is create a copy of that so I can present it to my development administrator who owns my development uh, virtual machine ser SQL Server. So inside vRealize automation allows you to own items like a data store, like a flash array snapshot, a lot of other things like that. And I can run custom actions on only the items that I own. So what I'm doing right here is I'm creating a snapshot of that data store that holds my production virtual machines. Once that snapshot's been created, I can then create a host addressable volume from that snapshot, a new VMFS data store in my development environment. So you can see that snapshot that was created is actually now in my items list. You can see when it was created and all kinds of stuff like that. What I'm going to be doing from that snapshot is creating that new VMFS. So I'll give the cluster I want to present it to, I'll confirm my flash array, and I'll give it a name, something that makes sense to me so I know know what that data store is for. Okay. So I'll kick off this workflow, and it's going to go and take that flash array snapshot, connect it, create a volume out of it, connect it to the proper host group and VMware cluster, rescan it, and bring it up so I can actually use it. And this is all automated through this product. Mm -hmm. So once that data store has been created, it's now listed in my data store so I can run additional workflows on it. So now I'm logged in as my SQL development admin inside of my development SQL server. And what I want to do is add a, a copy of that old virtual disk so I can bring up my database, which is what I'm doing right now. That database is now inside of that virtual machine. I can online that disk, and I can see the new files created in my e-volume, so I can add it into my SQL server and run my tests. Okay. If you want to find more information about this, there's a lot more. This is supposed to just give you an idea about what you can do with vRealize Automation and vRealize Orchestrator to automate and build a private cloud in your environment. And Pure Storage has a lot of options from vRealize uh, Operations, from vRealize Login Site, to integrate and create a quick and simple private cloud for your, your infrastructure.
Is there a plugin that integrates the functionality with the Flash Array? Yeah, so vRealize Automation actually uses a vRealize Orchestrator plugin that we offer to automate all these tasks. It makes it very simple, no custom work required to automate the Flash Array. Automation for the win. Thanks, Cody. <laughs>
Well, we know for sure there's 8,000 uh, incidents that we've taken that we've been able to proactively take care of. And of those, 170 would, would have definitely caused a serve one at some point if they were left to sink, mm -hmm. uh, linger on. So we've actually been able to prevent, we know of 170, potentially more, um, by just taking that proactive step. Well, that's fantastic, right? Just cut, yeah. the, cut the downtime right out of the, uh, that's, of the environment, you the know, predictably Don't and proactively, Don't even have right? in the first place. You bet. Are we doing any, are you doing anything else different kind of behind the scenes to kind of help us get that, uh, that availability number? Yeah, so the third, the third leg is, is the support organization and the people within there. So, I mean, people behave how they're, they're incentivized. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we don't measure our team you know, on traditional metrics that, that are used across the industry. We look at two metrics in support. One is our CSAT, our NPS score, mm -hmm. and the other one is the availability number. And if you tie those two together, that's what's important to the customer. So it's important to us. We don't bog our team down with you know, minutiae and just worrying about other stuff that really isn't important to the customer. So that's all we care about. They're there to respond as quick as possible. And the first thing is, is if there's an outage is to get the systems restored as possible. So that's what we're, we're aiming for. Awesome, thanks Colin. And so that kind of transparency, that, I mean, that's really what we do around here. You think about data reduction, it's on our website. You can see how we're actually measured you know, across the fleet. Um, and, and, we, and we want to share that with people. And I'm really excited to see that we're doing the same thing on the availability front, right? So yeah. measured actual six nines you know, on the flash of AM and look forward to so coming back and sharing an update uh, with folks over, you know, over time, because that's just what we do. Thank you, Colin. I'm a big baseball fan. I, I've been a Yankees fan uh, my whole life. My family has been Yankees fans for generations. Uh, you know, I grew up back east. Uh, in fact, my mother's cousin was once afraid to tell her family she was dating a Brooklyn Dodgers fan. And when I go to the games, I love to keep score. Uh, you know, I've kept score for a long time. And I really like it. You know, I take off every pitch, whether it was a ball, a strike, a foul, everything that happens. Uh, I like the statistical nature of the game. I like really paying attention to the game when, when you do it. And, um, you know, it's interesting uh, now to see how much that data uh, gathered from all that scorekeeping uh, helps the teams. So the teams today, every single pitch, exactly what kind of pitch it was, where it was thrown, who it was thrown to, what was the game situation, they take all of that data, they crunch it, exactly what did the hitter do with it. So when that hitter comes up, they know, hey, if we're throwing a fastball low and outside, this is what that hitter's done the last hundred times that pitch was thrown. And that's why you see them moving, and you see the shortstop and the second baseman and all the fielders, you know, moving around a lot more, shifting a lot more. And, you know, that's what some one of the things the teams are doing with big data. They're really analyzing how effective their players are in every situation, using that to manage the games, using that to manage how they select players uh, and everything. Now, all of that is really enabled by smart storage. Uh, you know, smart storage is responsive to their needs. It's effortless. It's so simple and easy to use. And the teams can do what they need to, and they can do it rapidly. And that's one of the things that, uh, you know, we're really focused on at Pure, is making the storage effortless for our customers. One of the other things we're very focused on at Pure is NVMe. NVMe is something we're going to explore in the next episode. It's critical to enabling the performance density that solid state storage is capable of. Just sticking a big SSD into a system doesn't work. You really need the NVMe to exploit the capabilities of the solid state. Well, we're done here. Thanks for hanging out with us with our very first episode of Outside the Box. Let's practice, can we practice the high five right if now? If you look at the other person's elbow yeah. when you're high fiving, then you will never miss the high five. Are you serious? What they say. Oh my god, you better not be wrong. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm gonna I don't try think it. I am ever wrong, so you, you know, guys are ready.